there was like a police warrant out for my arrest because the taxi I couldn't afford. If you're gonna start Instagram, do it the right way. Still working this job, I have no fucking money, and it's just day after day, just slowly but surely getting better. Kids are so fucking advanced nowadays, it's, it's incredible. And it just goes to show how important your environment is that molds you. Colin, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. It's a pleasure to finally meet you in person. I've had the pleasure of consuming your content online for a little while, but it's great to meet you in person and actually get to talk about what you're doing. Great to meet you too, brother. Thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. I like to roll right into things. And I wanted to start with a quote that I think sums up how your journey started pretty perfectly. Mm -hmm. And it's Gary Vee. If you don't know what your brand is, document your journey and your journey will become your brand. <laughs> what does that mean to you? It's one of my favorite quotes. Yep. You did your research. <laughs> Yeah. So when I first got started, I, you know, was in, in between quitting my job and, uh, was just consuming everything I could about Gary V, Grant Cardone, Ed Milet, all the main ones out there. And, uh, what Gary V really said was, Hey, you know, you could go out and create content on Smurfs. If you want, you could start a Smurf collection and you can make 87 grand a year. Or you could go work a miserable job like I was working at at the time and, you know, make the same amount. And I was like, fuck, like, why don't I just, you know, do something online that I actually enjoy and I'd much rather make the same amount doing that than doing what I'm doing now, selling payroll. Yep. And so uh, I was like, but I have a problem. What what am I going to talk about? I don't know what I, I'm good at. I don't know what to do. And so literally that quote was at the end of his book. It was like, hey. If you don't know what your brand is, just document the journey and your journey will become your brand. And I was just like, whoa, <laughs> like I get to just be myself every single day. And by me showing the good, the bad, the ugly, the lessons learned, everything in between, I can now become, you know, someone in front of everyone. I can be, evolve and everyone will watch that. And what I didn't know at the time was like by me showing my vulnerability, my vulnerability, I would be able to gain the trust of thousands of people that follow me. And so that helped me sell, you know, $12 million online in the past five years, a hundred percent organically through Instagram with no ads. And uh, yeah, it's a super powerful quote. And I think that if everyone just did that, they'd be a lot better off in every area. Dude. I mean, I know people heard the $12 million and they're probably like, all right, dive into that, but we're going to go through and your whole journey here and get to all of the success, which there's plenty of it in a bunch of different ways. But I knew I wanted to start with that quote because one, I knew how much it meant to you because yeah. it describes your journey perfectly. I mean, you've been posting every day on stories and on social for years now. Yep. And it really is a testament to there is a way to organically blow something up because everybody's all into paid this, paid that, I gotta do ads. And we were just talking about it off camera. I keep seeing people on X now posting ads. You've done it all organically. How does that feel that all of that traffic was driven by you yourself? Yeah, so it, it's it's awesome because, you know, number one, ads, you have to spend money to get eyeballs. And the way I did it, I just put my time and effort into it and it's free. So you pay with your time, basically. You pay with your effort. Um, I will say though, that on Instagram, I did buy into the celebrity shout outs, which, you know, in the beginning, that's what everyone was doing that I was around. And it, you know, I, I don't regret anything in my life. You know, it all works out perfectly, but, uh, I would say that celebrity shout outs, if you're starting your Instagram now is not the way to go, you know, growing your Instagram by having some celebrity in another country say, Hey, uh, you know, I'm going to give away this Louis Vuitton purse. You go follow these 50 people, and after you do that, I'm going to pick one of those people that did that, and then you're going to win this purse. So all those people go and follow all the people on her list, and then you end up gaining a bunch of followers. So that's how I did it in the beginning, but then I sold everything organically. I never, you know, I would just do stories, I would do posts, and that's how I sold things. So uh, I just had to correct that because, you know, if you look at my followers on my main account, it, it looks a little crazy, and that's because I did so many of those shout outs. So I'm completely transparent about it. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm reversing my followers on the main Instagram just because I want to get to like my normal organic number, which is somewhere around 150K. Uh, so I have a guy right now removing about 1,000 followers a day. Uh, and then I started my Reels account because 
I love organic. Like yep. organic is really everything. And like, I am as real as I can be right now. I'm super happy in how transparent I've become uh, with my life and everything in it. My businesses, how much money I make, my family, my girlfriend, uh, well, fiance now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to tell people that like, yeah, like my, my other accounts, hundred percent organic, this account I'm kind of reversing from the shout outs I did, but I'll just tell you right now, if you're going to start Instagram, do it the right way. Just a hundred percent be yourself. You might grow a hundred followers every single month for the first year, but all it takes is one reel, one podcast, one YouTube video and boom, you're going to blow up. And when you do the follower thing, it really screws with your engagement as well. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of my answer. To that. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate you being very transparent about yeah. that because something that I've talked to with the bigger guests as they've come on here is authenticity is so important. And unfortunately we live in a somewhat unauthentic time right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I appreciate you being transparent and really open. And I think that's going to play great into a lot of the questions we have coming up. And let's start at the beginning of your life. You've said on other podcasts that you were really creative, even at a young age. How has that played into the successful person you are now? Yeah. So that was really what I believe my path was from day one, right? Like when I was growing up with my family, I was the only child for the first like five years. So I was, my mom kind of just let me do my thing and I would create these comic books. I would create these Lego sets and basically build them how they were told to be built. And then I'd take them all down. I build these crazy things all by myself. My mom's like, damn, like how the hell did he do that shit? And so like, I was just always very creative. I could sit in my room for hours on end, create comic books and create stories. I used to tell my mom that I owned a business and then the business burnt down. And like, I started like a hot dog company and made it like a multi-million dollar company, like all these crazy wild dreams as a little kid. So that evolved, you know, as I grew up into me grabbing my mom's camera and going outside with that camera and it had the video option. It just came out with video. And I would shoot these little comedy skits in the backyard with my neighbors that I met when I moved to my new house when I was about uh, 11 or 12 years old. And so that evolved into then taking those, putting it on iMovie, because uh, my grandpa bought my parents a new Mac. We'd get a new Mac every year. And that was like the big present. And so finally, when I was intelligent enough to like understand keyboards and how to get on the internet, I got on YouTube in about 2008. And I was like, holy crap. I started watching Smosh. Uh, started watching all the different creators. Me and my friends also love YouTube. So we'd watch music videos, Smosh, all kinds of things on there. And we would be like, we want to do this too. And so we take the camera, we go in the backyard, we do like parkour in the woods. We had these like woods with like a little river. We do all these jumps. We did skateboarding. Um, so it was just a whole creative world that I was in with all my friends but everything kind of changed when I got into high school. So like middle school, that was all fine because, you know, everyone's super young at that time. No one's really bullying yet. And then once I got into like eighth grade and freshman year, I got bullied for all of my creative, you know, passions. Like people found my YouTube and they started making fun of me. Like I was playing with like fingerboards and I would like film fingerboard videos yeah. and then I'd film skateboard videos. So anything I could skate on snowboard i was obsessed with like all the uh extreme sports and my dad was the opposite my dad was baseball football wrestling sports like hardcore athlete uh and i didn't really like sports and so it was like everything was pointing me to this creative path the youtube all this stuff and then everything else is pulling me away yeah. my parents pulling me away society pulling me away so unfortunately uh, I silenced that creative, you know, power within me for a very long time. I, I kind of shut it down completely. And that was the beginning of my life getting very dark, slowly, but surely ending up in a very dark place because I was not in alignment with my conscious. My conscious was screaming for help, but you need to create, you need to do, you know, this path that we sell you, set you out on for, uh, I believe in God. I believe God, you know, wanted me to go down this path of creative creativity and, you know, having my own voice and, and, you know, being the light and helping people. And that kind of got shut off for 10 years, I guess. And yeah, then I went to college and we can talk about all that. Yeah, no, I think that's just really great that you're able to share that because there probably is people listening here that went through that similar path 
but if they're able to listen to this and we're able to catch them at the stage of high school or late high school where you were, where you silenced that, maybe they listen to this and don't silence it mm. because it's, it's, it's crazy. Like I played sports my whole life, varsity baseball, freshman year, all the way through senior year. I got to live the cool athlete life, but I saw other people who had other passions and I, I remember just seeing people not appreciate those passions the way they would appreciate sports in high school. Yeah. But fast forward now, I'm 24. It's been six years, I think, since I stopped playing sports. Nobody gives a shit about what I did in those sports. Mm -hmm. And all of those people that I saw doing those other passions are still involved in them or that turned into a career or that yeah. turned into this. Yep. Where like I put all my time and effort into sports and like I didn't go play professional baseball. Yep. And I think it's important for people listening to like, don't silence the inside part of you. Um, but you mentioned there that things started to get a little dark. Maybe talk a little bit about that and what that experience was, because I want to be able to build off that to yeah. a more positive message. Sure. Yeah. So basically when I said, fuck it, I'm going to silence the voice and just go along with the pack, right? Just go along with the crowd. And uh, I started getting into, you know, what every high school kid gets into alcohol, smoking weed, girls, high school basement parties. And that became kind of I mean, looking back on it now, I'm an extrovert. I love being social. So having my extrovert show that that side of me being in a, an environment where I get to thrive with alcohol, kind of, you know, going through puberty and at that time being like, holy shit, like girls, alcohol, this is awesome. Plus me trying to completely silence and forget about being creative. You know, this was the perfect outlet for me. So I dove really deep into like the party life. Um, you know, I, I didn't like sports. My dad forced me to play sports and wrestling was super tough. So whenever I got out of wrestling, you know, I was hanging out with the older kids in wrestling. They would get me into all the parties. And so, yeah, I, I at that time I would basically just go to wrestling practice all week, just destroy myself in there. You know, we had like three hour practices. I was cutting weight to make weight class. Um, just really tough. Like kind of looking back like every night, like in my bed, like, holy shit. Like, how did I get in this situation where like, I'm like killing myself every day. And you know, I, I want to really be skateboarding in the skate park, <laughs> like yeah. filming the stuff, but you know, that, that doesn't fit in this life anymore. And so, yeah, it was just a lot of that. And then, you know, the next thing was college. It's like, okay, now the next path is college. Everyone goes to college. You're going to study business school. You're going to get a job. So like I kind of bought into it because now college meant I get to party. Yeah. So it was like that alternative route that I was like, all right, this is what I was sold. I'm going to make it work. I get to have my party fun stuff as long as I do, you know, business school and I'll get a job after. So that's kind of how it went. So I, uh, I applied to like 10 schools. I didn't have the, I had like a 2.9 GPA in high school. And, uh, I applied to like university of Arizona, Arizona state, West Virginia, Ohio state, Ohio university, any of the ones on the top 10 party list. Yeah. That's where I was trying to go. So I showed my dad I'm smacked. He's like, as long as it lines up with the business school and it's in the top 100 list, you could go there and, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make it work. And so uh, I was lucky. My my grandma saved up a lot of money. I only had to pay for a few semesters of school on student loans. So they sent me out to U of A, University of Arizona, one of the biggest party schools, joined a fraternity, one of the biggest party frats at the school. And, uh, you know, it all starts out fun, bro. You think, you know, how could anyone ruin their lives from having fun and doing drugs and like getting chicks, right? Yeah. And, and that's what I did for like four years. And there, nothing too crazy happened in college besides when I, when I came home, I got assaulted uh, at a party uh, and it was just a freak accident. And I think once again, it was, it was just God's plan. Uh, I went to some high school college party in the summer, was sitting on the back deck. Someone came around who was extremely intoxicated and he kind of completely lost control, tried fighting someone inside the house randomly. And then he got embarrassed because they pushed him off the guy. And so he went for his next target. I was right outside right when he ran out there and he saw me on the bench, just started just pummeling my face in like blindsided me. 
Um, so I got completely knocked out, woke up in the hospital, was on morphine. My face was in like 24 pieces. Uh, they were putting me on all kinds of painkillers and it was just like that, like just one instance, like, you know, going to a party home for the summer, about to move into my frat house sophomore year. And then in the hospital, like just what the fuck happened? Summer's gone. Can't work out. I had horrible acne at the time. So I wanted to take Accutane no longer could take Accutane because that ruins uh, bone development. Your bones can't develop on that stuff. So they're like, no, now you can't take that. You got to go to school with your acne. You got to stay in the hospital. Just like a lot at once. And I'm just, you know, back then I just had the victim mindset. Like, why me? Yeah. Instead of, you know, w- uh, you know, this happened for me. Mm-hmm. It happened to me. That's what I thought back then. But really, I think that was a seed that was planted that helped me out in the future. And we'll get into that. You can remind me to kind of talk about how that transpired later on. Uh, And then basically after I graduated, I had done every single thing that my parents told me. I got the business degree. It took me two tries to get in the business school. I fucking fought my ass off uh, to, to, you know, get in there and study my ass off and, you know, do everything I didn't want to do. And I did it all. I got my job. And I was like, awesome. I'm going to go enjoy the summer. We went uh, to Europe with some of my college buddies, flew back home, and it was time to start the workforce, nine to five. Yep. And I'll never forget, like two weeks in, I texted my buddy who had already been graduated for a year. He was working at another similar corporate company. And I'm just like, bro, it's been two weeks. Like, you've been doing this for a year. Like, this is like what, what we're going to be doing now forever. And it, I, he's just like, bro, it fucking sucks. Like, welcome, dude. And he's like, yo, like, you know, come over, like, let's drink. And like, that was that was the cycle that began. It was work for five days and then party like I was still in college on the weekends. Yep. Like getting absolute, like upping the drugs, doing coke, doing Xanax, fucking whatever I could to just get my mind off it and disconnect. And then boom, Monday hits. I'm back in the office like a zombie. I have no motivation. I literally feel like my soul is has like left my body. I'm just like a, a sim. I'm, I'm just like literally just a cog. You know, I'm just in the system, just a yep. fucking rat, dude. And I'm just like, damn, like this is not how my life is gonna be. And then, uh, you know, God had another plan to kind of divert me because I I wasn't stopping. I was still partying. I said I was gonna get better. I would watch some YouTube videos, some personal development stuff, but then I'd get blacked out on the weekend. Like I didn't know what else to do. One day I got drugged at a club uh, in Scottsdale, woke up at some random dude's house uh, in a bed. There was like a dude lying on the bed. There was a bunch of people uh, in the other room on the floor. I had one shoe on, a shirt ripped off, got like roofied and like taken advantage of. I have no idea what happened to this day. And uh, that was the defining moment when I couldn't even order a taxi because my account was overdrawn. Uh, And so by the time I got home, there was like a police warrant out for my arrest because the taxi I couldn't afford. So the taxi driver's calling me as I'm trying to figure out why I have a lump on my head. What the fuck happened last night? No one even knows where I went. And this guy's saying I'm about to get picked up by the police to go to jail if I don't pay his cab tab. And I look at my account and there's no money in there. I'm just like, I'm done. Like, fuck this shit. Like, I'm fucking done going out. I'm done drinking. I could have died last night. Like, my parents raised me well. Like, I'm like, I'm just, this is not who I am. I'm, I'm a good person. And like, I knew that I was being someone that I was not meant to be. And that was my defining moment. And I looked in the mirror and I said, I'm never going to get this low again in my life. And I believe that to that day, that was still the lowest point I've ever experienced. And you know what they say? Like you can only go as high as you went low. And so I kind of took that as my springboard and, and catapulted up from there And that was about, I think that event happened in March of 2019, March, April, June, July. Yeah. And then I quit my job in August of 2019. So it's about five months later, quit my job. Dude, I mean, crazy story. And I always appreciate when guests like you are very honest because unfortunately, a lot of the media and content I see online is only the great and amazing parts of how I made millions of dollars and how I did this and how I did that. And I always challenge my guests when they come on, like what were the bad parts of life? Like what were the tough parts? Not just the great stuff that everybody wants to hear, because I think there is people listening who, and and the majority is people going through that situation in life, Mm. working their nine to five, partying in their mid twenties, like they're still in college doing drugs 
And I think it's important to talk about those things because now people can look at you and not only are you more relatable, obviously, to more people, but can get inspired. And maybe this, again, maybe this lights a fire under five people and gets them to change. And like, that's enough for me. And that's why I enjoy having these deeper conversations with my guests, because at the end of the day, we're looking to help people. I want people to get on the right track. I want people to succeed just like I know you do too. And these conversations have that potential. And that's something that I really enjoy about the show. So I I, I really appreciate you kind of letting us into that life. Of course. But then we go from that to you started filming every moment of your life right after you quit your job. And you made, I think, 12 grand in your first month after doing that. Mm. How did we go full 360 and what was that experience like? Yeah. So, I mean, back to that point, the lowest point of my life, I started locking myself in my room. I wouldn't go out anymore. Stop even talking to my roommates, really. They're like, bro, what's wrong with you? And like, mind you, I'm living at the time where everyone around me is doing what I was just doing. And then all of a sudden I'm going to stop and they're going to think like, oh yeah, we'll let him be. No, you're going to get a ton of backlash. Like, bro, what do you think you're doing? You're fucking broke. Like everyone just turns on you because you're breaking out of the little bubble. That's like the safety bubble. Um, So people don't like that. So number one, I had to deal with that shit. That was rough. I had to completely cut myself off from everyone. And I was living in a very toxic environment. So I did it in the most toxic environment. That means anyone watching this, you could definitely do it as well. Um, So yeah, kind of just, you know, cleaning the system, right? I audited my life. I realized that I was, I mean, dude, I was watching porn every fucking day. I was filling myself with drugs and alcohol, shitty foods, just doing everything possible wrong. Like my favorite rapper was fucking all the rappers that were addicted to like Xanax and drugs is like, what is going Like I'm literally just taking in every single negative energy possible. So it was just like a completely, uh, detail. It was a detox period of just stripping everything in my life and, you know, praying every day. Like when you get that low and you start to ask, like, is this re- like, is God real? Like, yeah. is, is he really out here? Like, can you help me? And so that's kind of where I was at. So yeah, dude, just a slow grind of rebuild, like still working this job. I have no fucking money and it's just day after day, just slowly, but surely getting better, like 0.1% better going to the gym more, waking up early, watching more YouTubes. And then from the YouTube seeing, okay, rich people do this morning routine thing. Everyone wakes up at 5 a.m. You know, maybe I can get some more time before my job. So then I went and did that. I would, I would set my alarm for five with like a motivational quote, like your goal, your goals don't give a fuck about your excuses. Wake up. Then it's like, okay, now I need like a whiteboard. I want to put my goals up. So I went over to Goodwill, bought a whiteboard for like five bucks, scrubbed the shit with vinegar, put it up on my wall. Now I'm starting to write, you know, my vision. Uh, I want to make 2K extra a month with the side hustle. Like, bro, we're talking like I just started entrepreneurship. Yeah. Never had picked up a personal development book in my life until 2019. So like I was brand new. And like, you know, I talked to a lot of kids today. Dude, these kids have been so on their shit. They've been fucking doing this since they were 14, 15. <laughs> it's crazy. Like unbelievable. Like kids are so fucking advanced nowadays. It's it's incredible. And it just goes to show how important your environment is that molds you. And my environment, even though it's cookie cutter, looks good. You know, I went to college, job, 401k. I think that's the most toxic environment you can be in. The, the environment of comfort is everything wrong with society. So, dude, yeah, just having... You know, that rebuild phase was was very uh, slow, but it, it, it was working. You know, it was slow but sure, and I was uh, getting more confidence in myself. I started to see through all the bullshit, started to see through all the superficial relationships, started to see that all my relationships were built on drugs and alcohol and nothing real in the middle. So it was pretty easy to just stop talking to everyone and start all over again. I started going to networking events. Uh, picked up Gary V books, listened to him on repeat on, on my way to work. Uh, and I started to document my social media while I was working on my job. So I didn't wait until I quit. I started literally like a few months after that event happened. I would post my quotes. I would post my books I was reading. I would post my takeaways from the Grant Cardone real estate event I went to and just slowly but surely getting my name out there and people starting to be like, oh, like talking shit. But also some people like, dude, I love what you're doing. So it was just that slow grind and um, started documenting, you know, trying real estate, 
trying the ATM business, trying a content creation company, um, trying uh, AT. Yeah, I said ATMs, just trying all kinds of shit. And uh, none of them really worked that well. All the physical businesses I tried. But because I was documenting everything, people were like, hey, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? They're like, I want to do like, like whatever you're doing. Like, can you show me how to do that? And I'm like, oh, like personal brand, like show your life. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. So this is when the giveaway thing came in. At the time, I met these kids in Scottsdale that owned like an agency, a social media marketing agency. And I, I reached out to them. One of the kids had me come to the office um, and I went in there and he like just blew my mind. He's like, we have this service that gets people more likes and engagement. We have this story viewer thing that gets thousands of people to view their profiles that you can sell. And then we also sell these giveaways where a celebrity shouts out a page and then all these people follow them. You can sell them for 300 bucks more than we give it to you for. And you make all that money. I'm like, what the fuck? So now I'm like going back to all the people that have been messaging me like, Hey, I can help you. Let me grow your following first. You need credibility. So I started selling those giveaways and that was my first income stream on social media. And when I quit my job, I had already been kind of planting those seeds. So yeah, it was easy for me to make 12 K in the first month. Cause I had 24 hours a day now, instead yeah. of having to go to work, kind of like be careful what I post in case my boss saw it, he saw everything and they, they wanted to fire me. I, I went in there and quit. But uh, yeah, they were ready to fire me anyway. So that kind of took off. And uh, yeah, 12K the first month. Then I started doing it by myself and not using that company. So I found like the source for the giveaways. So then I cut out the middleman, increased my profit margins like crazy, started building affiliates and teams under me to sell them. And then by, you know, I think it was August, September, October, around November, I, I was doing like 20K, 25K a month, like. It's just like, holy shit. And it was just that momentum, man. And just, you know, finding something that was like an exploit in the system and just, you know, just grinding harder than anyone in the game and, and also not being afraid to post. Yeah. And that was it. And that was kind of the start to it. Then we can get into all the credit stuff. Yeah, yeah. And before we dive into exactly what you were posting about, at least at the start, like you just mentioned, I'm sure there's people listening that are saying posting is a chore. Like it's hard for me to post a lot. What were some of the challenges you experienced when you were documenting your whole life on social media and what were the positive results that came from that? I mean, as long as you're consistent, bro, like you, you'll get some backlash right away. Like you'll, what will happen is a lot of people will share your stuff to their quote unquote friends and they'll just talk behind your back. So like if you see on your stories, you can see how many shares it has to like yeah. other people. Uh, a lot of people were sharing my stuff around and then I'd like go and be in a situation where I'm with people and then they'd be like drunk or something. They'd be like, oh, you understand that like everyone's talking about you, Colin, like because you're doing this like social media. And like, I'm just like at that point, bro, I've already been so fucking low in the ground that yeah. like, I don't give a fuck what you guys think. Like, I think that's where it all happened for me. The that shift in my mindset of like, oh my God, like what's Susan going to think if I post this story? Like they're going to talk about me. Motherfucker, I was just fucking kidnapped and I have no money. I don't give a fuck what any of you guys think. Like this is my life and I got to make my shit better because this is not good right now. Like you guys can go fuck yourselves. I don't <laughs> care. So that's kind of where I was, bro. And once you get to that point, you just stop caring about everyone else. And then you go to the networking events and they tell you, successful people do not talk down on others it never happens you'll never get a millionaire talking shit about another kid trying to become a millionaire yeah never happens never once ever so once i realized that i'm like okay all the people that i look up to are actually trying to help me out with their inspiring content and uh you know i don't have to worry about this shit so i would say just as soon as you can, just stop caring about what other people think, because to be quite honest, they're way too worried about thinking about what someone else is thinking about them. So it's just this big line of people thinking about what the other person is thinking about. Everyone's too worried about themselves. All right. All you should be worried about is you. And that's it. I think, I mean, they hit the nail on the head right there. Like that is the core concern with most people with posting online. And like, that was, that was the thing for me. That's why I built those brands that we were talking about behind an alias. I didn't want to post about it, didn't care. And what did it become? The biggest regret I had from that experience. Yep. And then when I started this, I'm like, oh shit, like, how's it going to be? Like, I don't even want to watch the remake of the video. So I don't even want to watch myself. But then I realized I'm like, 
who cares like what other people are thinking it has no effect or nothing to do with what i'm gonna do i'm still gonna post i'm still gonna create and it's still an ongoing journey for me for people listening who i mean you're on one extreme where completely confident sharing all of your stuff been doing it for a while i just started a few months ago and it, it is tough it's not easy yeah but exactly what you just said was the realization i had where i was like all right who cares like I'm going to share this on my personal story now. I'm going to post yeah. this on my personal Instagram. So Only people that are doing worse than you are going to talk shit. That's it. I mean... It doesn't, doesn't matter. I pray for them, to be honest. Like, wish them good luck. Yeah, I've literally never had one person shit talk me who's successful. It's always the account with 20 followers that's like, you're such a loser, bro. Your content sucks. It's like, dude, think about the fact that you carved 15 minutes out of your day to DM a random person and shit on them. Something's wrong. Yeah. Something's not going great. Yep. So, I mean, it's crazy. Yep. But your starting point for all of the posting was about credit, living the kind of travel hacking life is a way to put it. Yeah. How did that happen? Why did you pick that? And and yeah. what was that like? I always loved to travel. Like I grew up in New Jersey, super cold, you know, brutal winters, six months of just gray skies. So I was always like keen to get out of there. And then my dad would start to bring us on like once a year vacations. And so I, you know, I went to Hawaii when I was like 13. I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. <laughs> I got to get the hell out of here. So I, boom, I went to, you know, first opportunity I had, I moved to Arizona, went to college there. So I always wanted to be someone that could pick up and go wherever. There's so much of the world to see. My dad was in outside sales his entire life. So he was, you know, running national sales organizations with the expense card, racking up all of his points. So he kind of over time from, you know, when I grew up, he taught me the the game of travel. He had all the top statuses. He's like, hey, you know, we just did our whole family vacation for free. I save up all these points and we do this because of this. And so I always kind of knew like, oh, like I'm going to do that too. That's that's awesome. So I got lucky for my dad being in that position and kind of mentoring me on that. And so right when I realized that, oh, okay, now that, you know, I, I can get credit cards, uh, I'm going to start taking this seriously. So I... In that time when I was creating all these businesses, I took out a loan, a $20,000 personal loan uh, at like 12% interest or something. And, uh, you know, obviously lost all the money in a bad business. And, you know, now I'm out 20 grand plus I got 20K of student loans. Now I'm putting extra money on credit cards, trying to fund my content creation business. And basically all of them failed. And now I'm boom, now I'm 50K in debt. Yeah. Plus I, I'm working at a job I hate. <laughs> so uh, I was like, shit, I really got to focus on like how I can fix this. Like, this is not good. I know you need credit to get real estate. And I'm reading Robert Kiyosaki. He's like, credit's everything. Now I don't even have access to my credit. Fuck. So now I'm like, I, I got to dig myself out of this hole. So I started YouTubing credit repair, took a credit repair course, got my credit repair cloud account, uh, started sending out my own dispute letters. And in about three, four months, I got my collection removed from my uh, charged off uh, loan, that 20K loan. And once that got removed, my score shot up like 100 points from like a 630 to like a 730. And I was like, oh my God, like I just did that. Like I just literally wiped off debt because they weren't able to prove that the account was mine. There was an inconsistency on the filing. And that's, that's credit repair in a nutshell. So I'm like, okay. Uh, well, number one, I just documented that whole process. Now everyone knows I just got that shit off. And like all these people are coming out of the woodworks like, bro, my credit's fucked up. Like everyone's starting to be transparent because I was vulnerable and I was transparent about how bad my shit was. Yep. No one would have known about me getting my credit fixed if I wouldn't have talked about it the whole time. But it also takes that, you know, that, that that's hard. That's a leap of faith. Like you got to tell people that, yeah, you're in debt right now. So that was that was something I did right. And that got me all of my credit clients. And so once I realized, okay, credit is the gateway for access to capital. And it also gives me access to points, which can be converted into free travel, plus the status, the travel hacks, that whole game. I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, I, I don't like Scottsdale anymore. I want to move to fucking Bali. And I can now, you know, become a travel hacker personal brand. I'm 23 years old. I'm going to go travel the world right now. And so... Uh, in November, uh, Black Friday, 2019, I sat down like a week before 
and I uh, established an entire Instagram page called Credit Class, and I put all the knowledge I had acquired on credit over the past like three, four months of you know building mine up again, how I got approved for seven credit cards after I got that account wiped off, uh, how I got all the top statuses at Marriott, American Airlines, United, how I'm you know staying at Marriott's for 50% off, and I just start promoting it through my Instagram, just how I've been promoting everything else, but without a product. I just promoted myself every day. Now I just added a product to it. And bro, it was so easy. It was incredible. I was just like, holy shit, like Black Friday hit. I had 26 people sign up for just 250 bucks, sending me Zells and PayPals. And at the end of the night, I'm sitting there at, at dinner with my buddy. I'm like, dude, I just made $6,600 in a day. And he's like, bro, like you, you fucking made it, man. I'm like, dude, we made it. Like, yeah. this is it. Yeah. Like we just fucking like hacked the system. And so after that, I just started investing it all back into the lifestyle, the travel. And so my lease ended in December in Scottsdale. And that was my mission. Like I wrote on my phone right when I quit my job, it was August. I had till December six months to create an online business, blow up my brand and move the fuck out. And I, and I got it done. So we hopped on a plane, me and that buddy. Moved into a villa on Airbnb for a month in Bali. And the day I got there, I ran into my now fiance the day I got there. That's and that's like really like when like life started. And then I got this tattoo, 23, uh, because that was the year that I told myself I'd never go back to the person I was before this year. And that was like the lowest point. And that was like the rebuild of myself that, you know, I was meant to be. I mean, isn't it beautiful how life can really be when things start to go well incredible man it's you need you need all the pain uh the pain becomes the purpose like if i didn't have the painful lessons i wouldn't be able to sit here and teach right now i wouldn't be able to really become an entrepreneur and, and back to that thing we were talking about uh when i got assaulted so i uh obviously you know took some legal action and we you know went after the kid who did it and the homeowners and um you know I always was under the assumption from my attorney that I was going to get like a 300000 to $500,000 paycheck from this. And so this was my sophomore year of college. And he's telling me that, dude, b before you get out of college, you're going to have three hundred dollars to $500,000. So in my head, imagine telling a college kid this. Yeah. I mean, you're rich. I'm rich. You're I don't rich. have to work. <laughs> yeah. I can Now I'm going to just start investing early. My life's set. Dude, when you're 19, you think, 300 grand you're you're a millionaire you're a millionaire right? yeah that's all you could ever imagine so i'm now you know planting seeds in my head that like i'm different and shit and like i'm special and this was like the worst thing i could have ever done because when i got out of college uh i started being aggressive with taking on all the debt because i was like oh well my attorney's gonna call he said it's gonna be this year so it kept getting pushed back and pushed back and so i'm like you know trying to manifest that this money's gonna pop up in my account and I get in all this debt and I'm being super risky and I'm taking all these risks and I'm like, all right, like, it's fine. Even if I get in debt, I'm just going to have this money coming. I can pay off this shit. Never came. And so I'm calling my attorney and this is like 2019. I just quit my job. I'm in all this debt. And this was like before I went down the credit route. I'm like, fuck it. Like, this is going to save me. And he's like, Colin, like, it's not looking good, man. Like, a lot of delays right now. Then I'm like, okay, fuck. I got to do this on my own. Learn credit. Started getting momentum kind of really didn't really care about it anymore because I was making my own money. And then COVID happened and I call him and he's like, oh dude, you're probably not going to get this for like two years. The courts are shut down right now. Like this is, this is completely on the back burner for them. Yeah. So now I'm like, oh my God, but Hey, like at least, you know, I, I have a business now. Yeah, yeah. So literally like that was kind of a catalyst. Like if that never happened, maybe I wouldn't have taken all those risks. You know what I mean? So I always think about that. Like, yeah, I got assaulted, but that put me in a position to think, even though it didn't happen, that I was special and that I could take all those risks. And then I just saved myself. So it was just God's plan, bro. And then I got paid. Uh, it, the money actually did come in 2022. My 2021 tax bill came due. I had zero tax planning that year. I didn't do anything. I just made a fuckload of money and I put it all in Bitcoin, which gave me zero write-offs. I yeah. literally had no write-offs, no expenses. And I made like 1.3 mil. And they're like, yeah, you owe uh, 475, Colin. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, 475. And I'm just like, I have all my money in Bitcoin. I'm like, I'm going to have to sell my Bitcoin. Now it's 2022. Bitcoin is literally crashing yeah. by like 60% at this point. I'm like, 
So I'm literally going to give up all my money. I just put it all in Bitcoin at 40K. And now it's at like 25K and I have to sell all of it. My attorney calls. He goes, Colin, good news. We got the money. Sent me a wire for $475,000. I paid my tax bill. Dude, I mean, fuck. Like, perfect timing, bro. You've had all of these crazy experiences that have all led to such positive things. Yep. And I think people get lost in how quick life can go and don't realize these little things. You do such a good job of like tying these moments into successful situations down the road. Why do you think you're able to do that? Because I don't think most people can just go back and be like, this moment was the reason that this happened. Yeah. But I mean, you're telling the story so clear that like, I feel like I'm there with you. Yeah. You think that comes from the creativity or any I'm of that? I'm extremely spiritual now, man. I mean, from all the shit that's happened in my life, I'm, you know, it's one, one times a coincidence, two times, three times, four times. It's like, okay, some, <laughs> someone's out there looking yeah. out for me. So now it's just, it's just, you know, my intuition, I'm tapped in with my conscious. I'm completely in line with what I believe I'm supposed to be doing now. I pray every single day to God. I believe God has, you know, used me as a vessel and, you know, he's pouring into me wisdom. He's pouring into me light leadership. And, you know, really I'm, I'm completely aligned with what I'm supposed to be doing in my life. So I, I know that everything's happening for a reason and, you know, I'm just connecting the dots along the way. Oh, that's why that crazy shit happened because this, this, and this, and I, now I met this person and I got in this business and I dealt with these horrible people because now this taught me to never go down that path again. And it just happens over and over. And I could literally bring up story on story on story. And I journal every day of my life. So like every single journal is stored away in a bookshelf and I could pull up every situation that I've been through. And now I can tie it all back to why it happened. So I just think of life as a game now, man. It's just like, you know, we're all put here for specific reasons to learn, you know, through our souls, we have to learn different lessons, pain, and we have to experience, you know, all the different emotions. And uh, it's super beautiful, man. Once you start looking at life differently like that, you know, you know that everything's happening for you and you can sit through each experience with zero expectations and kind of just let go. And, you know, you stay neutral. If it's a horrible fucking thing, like, you know, your dog dies or even, you know, a parent dies or something like that, just know like, man, you're supposed to go through this and you're not supposed to shy away from it. You're not supposed to, you know, simmer down the pain with drugs and alcohol and, you know, try to avoid the lesson being taught to you. You need to actually bask in the lesson because that's where the power comes from. You only will go as high as your lowest point. So, you know, if you're going through something extremely painful right now, just look at what happened with my life. I mean, it can turn around as quick as that. So yeah, it's, if you're down super low, you're going to go super high. If you're at the craziest, highest point in your life, just know you're fucking coming right back down, bro. There's no one on earth that stays up as long, you know, their entire lifetime. It just doesn't happen. And in 2021, like that point in my life, you know, or maybe, yeah, like towards the end of 2021, my Bitcoin portfolio was, you know, crazy multi millions of dollars. Uh, had my tax bill taken care of businesses are crushing it. 2022 hits everything gone like business shut down crypto set 80 percent drop um you know partners i was working with scammed me everything just blows up and now i start to understand the cycle though so i'm like okay i've been here before yeah the good part's coming in maybe a year two years but we're gonna get there and what do i gotta do now experience the lesson become a student what did i do wrong and now it's awesome, bro. Like every year I go through these crazy cycles. Now I have all the lessons to bring back for the next up point. So I can figure out how to make it not as brutal on the way down. Yeah, no. And, and I, I think you, one, you do just a great job of storytelling. And I think that's comes from a lot of the content you put out constantly. You're, you're just good at it, but you're describing things that are easy to digest, but are applicable to anybody at any point in their life. They don't need to be a millionaire to know that there is ups and downs in life. You could be making 60 a year and there's going to be ups and downs. You could be making 600 a year. There's going to be ups and downs. Accepting that that is going to be a part of the journey is huge because people, when bad things happen, like you said, like to shy away, like to drown it away with drugs and alcohol and think like, why is this happening to me? But it's happening to everybody just in different ways. Mm. It's just your journey. Yep. Like you need to understand that and like you said, 
there's lessons in everything. Yeah. Everything you can take away certain things from all of these experiences. And the people who don't do that are the ones that continue to have the up and down and the fail and the fail. But for you, yeah, you're always going to have the ups and downs in the cycle. But I bet in 20 years, your down is going to be way smaller than it was the first time it happened because you've learned 20 years Correct. worth of lessons that are just going to continue to mitigate the risk. Correct. Get you ready. So, I mean, so much gold going on here. Like, I mean, for me, like for people watching or listening, like I'm getting more pumped up as we keep talking because this is so applicable and so helpful to people. I just think it's going to be really impactful if you're listening and taking notes and really taking this in because this is also stuff that can go right over your head. Oh, I know that. Oh, I know I need to do this. Actually do it. Like mm -hmm. I challenge people listening and watching to actually do the things that are being said right now. Think in the frameworks that are being talked about right now and notice the little differences because it's going to be huge. Mm -hmm. 100%. You're now very into personal fitness, personal brand, living a healthy lifestyle, biohacking. Talk about that. Yeah. So, I mean, everything went 180, right? I was doing cocaine, selling coke, like just doing complete degeneracy shit uh, five years ago. And now I'm doing the opposite. I have a fiance. I take care of my health. I'm a biohacker. I basically am a personal development coach. Um so yeah, man, it's it's awesome. I, I'm just teaching everyone what I reversed. I was here. I did this, this, and this. It worked for me. This is why you should do it because I know it fucking works. Like I just did it, you know, yep. hardcore, and I've done it to a very high extent uh, at a high level. So yeah, man, I right now uh, started a coaching business. Uh, I I actually got mentored. I I did a uh, business investment uh, was with Wes Watson. I don't know if you know him. Uh, he does business coaching. Uh, and he basically taught me a lot of things that I kind of already knew about because I'm huge on personal branding. I've been doing this for five years and yeah. I've sold multiple business services and info products and done seven and even eight figures with one of the companies I was selling. Um, so I just kind of went back to the basics and through him, he taught me that I, I was overthinking everything. I was making everything too complicated. thought I had to have crazy websites, a big team, lots of ads, whereas really all you need to do is help people solve problems, right? And you could do that through coaching and you could just story tell. And he is someone that is unbelievable at staying consistent. The guy was in jail for 10 years. Um, and basically he got out of jail and within six years, he's now worth like $40 million through online coaching and just strictly organic Instagram stories, telling his story uh, and becoming the best version of himself, you know, literally online organically every day and just broadcasting that person that he's proud of to the world. That's kind of like his saying. And so like I ran into him, I think in May he moved to Miami and, you know, when a big person moves to Miami, they start getting reposted on different podcasts. You see them on people's yachts, whatever started following him and he just sparked something inside of me again. And I haven't had that happen in about like two years. I've been kind of just going from different business to different business, always focusing on how can I make the most money? How can I get in a high ticket product? You know, is it trading? Is it e-com? And, you know, more focus on money and not really the long-term vision, the long-term picture of how can I serve people? How can I help as many people as possible and make a lot of money, live this incredible lifestyle, but we all benefit. I get to teach and the best way to learn is to teach. So every day that I teach my personal development and I teach my lessons and I pour into other people, I become a greater version of myself. So it's a constant personal development journey. And once you become an entrepreneur and you read the Gary V's, the Grant Cardone, the Ed Milets, you kind of get tired of them all, right? You kind of like shy away from that stuff. You stop listening to the podcast that got you there in the first place. And that's what I did. I kind of turned off personal development for two years and I was like, ah, I'm good. I don't need it anymore. I realized I do need it. Yep. I do need it. Everyone needs it. Like you will only exceed to a level as high as your personal development. Okay. So when I stopped the personal development, even though I was hitting the gym, eating healthy, I was not learning anymore. The simple things that got me to this point. So now I'm back on the journey of just becoming the best version of myself and giving that person to the world. And in return, having people say, Oh shit, like I want to be like Colin or I had that problem that he had. I, you know, I want to get, I want to ask him for coaching help. And basically now I coach in mindset, fitness, and business. Okay. So, uh, my fitness program is very simple. Uh, basically it's $750 for three months 
all the way up to $2,000 for a year. And what we do is we do online coaching. So I coach you one-on-one through my app. We give you a custom fitness plan with different workouts that evolve over time, give you a macro plan, diet plan. And then we meet weekly on coaching calls with all the other people that signed up for fitness coaching. So now we have a network where we all get better every single day. All those live calls are posted on our Mighty Networks page, which is kind of like Facebook, but for individual groups. Uh, And you get to communicate with everyone, network with everyone, and just really level up collectively. Uh, And man, I've been doing it for like three weeks now, literally just this new uh, program. And I've already added on 27 clients and, uh, you know, some business, some mindset, some fitness. And it's incredible, man. And then uh, mindset coaching is the same thing I just said, except one-on-one time with me. So we meet 30 minutes bi-weekly with myself. And then business coaching is me teaching you, number one, the credit stuff. Like I've scaled my credit. I have 22 credit cards that are open. I have over $500,000 in business credit lines. Uh, So I'm very good and useful in that space to scale your business. And then also the personal brand stuff, every product and service I've ever sold, I've always scaled to seven figures. Why is that? It's because I know how to story tell, know how to connect with people's emotions. And I know how to bring uh, their problems to the surface and offer the solution as the product. So I kind of just, you know, take people to have a product or a service online. Maybe they're running ads. Maybe they have a physical business. They haven't really tapped into the organic storytelling version of like, holy shit, I can print money through Instagram just by being myself in storytelling. And so I take these people that have no experience. They see me every day posting my entire life, making a lot of money, doing what I love. And they're like, I want to do that. And then I just coach them one on one. So that's kind of all the programs I've been doing. And dude, this is something that will last for 10, 20 years. This is not a little fad of, you know, e-com or some trading stuff or, you know, this is something that I'm so passionate about. Uh, This, I believe, is like the highest version of myself to be able to coach and to be someone for people uh, to look up to and to be able to lead people. Uh, It's what I love. And, you know, I get to make money doing it and it's a blessing. And I'm very excited to see where it takes me. I might need to hit you up. I'm trying to trim down this. Let's uh, get you shredded. Beer right? belly. Let's get you shredded. Uh, hopefully on. the way that Cam set this up, you can't really see it, but <laughs> it is something I'm working on. But I just think it's so cool. And like you could tell that you also feel this way and that you're really passionate. All the steps in your journey, you're now able to leverage while doing the core part of owning a business. Like, how does that feel that every day you get to go do something that you think is really cool and yeah. fun and exciting? So I'll say that I, because back to the quote, if you document your journey, your journey becomes the brand. I have the flexibility of being able to pivot into whatever the hell I want, whenever I want. And no one cares because they're like, oh, Colin understood that he learned this lesson from that last business. And he told us why he doesn't want to do it anymore. And now he sees this new path and he's going down that. It's just a TV show. Yep. And people are watching my failures and my lessons learned in real time. And they're like, okay, this makes sense why he's doing this. Because he did this, this, and this. And that didn't work. And this relationship did Because I broadcast it all. Everyone knows everything. So now it's just perfect timing. I mean... I did the credit stuff for a long ass time. You know, I did credit class, which turned into leverage lifestyle, teaching people how to leverage credit, build income, travel the world through credit cards, grew that to 1500 people. And it's awesome, man. I I love it. But this is my next calling. Like, this is what I feel called to do. I want to be a prime example for someone Uh, back to the wrestling days. Like we talked about earlier, like I've been disciplined my whole life. I've been trained in discipline in ways that I didn't understand at the time. Why was I going through wrestling, cutting 20 pounds of weight in my sophomore, junior year of high school? Like, what the fuck am I doing? I don't even like this. Now I get it. Yep. I was trained because I need to be the example for everyone else that waking up at 5 a.m. and going on that journey of becoming the best version of yourself is the way to go. And, and I get to be that person that everyone looks up to. And so that's just a path that I've been given and that I've accepted and I've completely let go and surrendered. And this is where it brought me. So I'm happy, man. I, I love what I do every day. And, you know, I'm blessed that I get to do it because I've been documenting the journey the entire time. And that's the only reason why I'm able to do it. I mean, it's amazing. And, and I'm so happy that you're able to experience that. Something that you mentioned there was you went and got some coaching that lighted some fire under you. Oh, yeah. I've done a lot of coaching, bro. I've I've paid at least $200,000 in the past two years in online mentorships, programs, coaching. Yeah, I mean, that's great because I want to dive into it. Yeah, You're part of Luke Belmar's Capital Club, and now you just said that you 
paid for all these other coaching experiences. Mm -hmm. What are some takeaways from that? What are some positives and what are some negatives from all of that money spent and those experiences? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm actually going to get dinner with Luke after this. Um, so yeah, dude, I mean, once again, I watch people online and if they spark a fire in me, I fucking go deep. Like I found Luke at a time where I lost all, all, I didn't lose. I didn't sell any Bitcoin, but on paper, I was losing all my money. Yeah. And I see this kid pop up and he's talking about how he sold everything at the top. And, you know, he already went through a cycle and he went through last cycle, learned all his painful lessons, wrote it all the way to the bottom. Now I'm going through what he went through last time. He's just one cycle ahead. I'm like, this is the guy I need right now. So I, I watched all of his podcasts and I'm not one of these people that's like, Hey bro, like you have all these setters and closers nowadays that are in your inbox. Like, Hey dude, like, can I work for you? Do you have a position available? You really think if I would have just DM Luke, like, even though I have a lot of followers, you know, I know he's, you know, popping off at the time. I know that if I want to stand out, I need to just pay him yep. and I'm a cool person. I know my values. I can give him value. He's going to like me. I have confidence in myself. So I paid and I went to his capital club literally within like two weeks after watching his first video, I fly to Phuket, Thailand. Then I go to capital club and meet him. Super cool dude. Kicked it off. Uh, actually becoming, became really good friends. He invited me on his Switzerland trip where I met all of his other very close homies. Uh, Hunter is one of my best friends that lives right near me now. He created one of the largest apps uh, called NGL has like hundred million downloads. Uh, my buddy champ, uh, who is a great friend as well. He has a big company, big YouTube, Jordan Welch. I've become very good friends with. So dude, it's been insane. Like my network is just absolutely blown up. And I'm able to offer them my network as well. So like, I'm very tight with Gary Brecka, uh, who's like the number one biohacker in the world. I got into him kind of by chance very early in like 2021. I invested in him and he became an amazing friend of me. Uh, I poured into my network with him as well. Refer everyone to him. Mark Moss, I paid $50,000 uh, for his mastermind, met incredible people through there, sold Bitcoin mining to his clients. Like, Dude, every single investment I've ever made, I've made 10x back. And the cool thing is those investments are evergreen. Like they're always coming back to me. Like these relationships that I'm growing and building with, you know, it's not like there's a dead, a dead end with them. Like they just keep going for my whole life. So every time I invest, man, is, is always a great outcome. I, I would highly recommend that if you're watching this and you hate your current friend group, you feel lost, this is sparkling some fire in you. Go to the next networking event. Go to the next mastermind. Go pay $2,000 and fly across the country and go sit in a room with a bunch of people just like you. It will absolutely change your life. And that's a that's what I did too. Like back in Scottsdale, when I was going through all that hard times, I was spending literally two, dollars $3,000 on my credit card of money that I did not have to get in the rooms with people. And that's where I found out about e-com. And then e-com was how I made a lot of money in 2020, 2021. Uh, and, I, and I found out about it through a mastermind that I paid for in 2019. That planted a seed all the way back then. And then I became, you know, a very, you know, big e-com seller. Um, so yeah, man, it's just every single one has just paid off and crazy dividends that I could never have imagined. I had similar experiences. I haven't gone all in. I've actually only dabbled. I've done two my first one was around my first business, sneaker botting. Yep. Paid five hundred dollars to have someone teach me how to use the software. Turn that five hundred dollars into multiple six figures. I think I got my money back on that. Yep. And then I paid a thousand dollars to have somebody who had already built a successful podcast talk to me about what they did when they started it, how they created it, how they formulated it, and now I'm here. And while the revenue's not coming in from a network perspective, that thousand is 300 X what yeah, it was now. value in other ways. Yeah, exactly. And the revenue will come down the road, but mm. I didn't come into this wanting that. But the highlight is I'm two for two there and I'm still trying to motivate myself to go all in and pay for these masterminds. And another person that you, like you didn't mention from capital club, Zach, he just had a mastermind in Tampa and I was lucky enough to get to go because I was filming a podcast with him, booked five guests from there, all like-minded individuals, hungry, wanted to come on, talk about what they're doing. Hell yeah. And I was getting a taste for like 
what an in-person, because I've never done an in-person mastermind where I meet other people. And I was like, shit, <laughs> I think I should be doing these more often. Oh, yeah. So it's awesome to hear that. I mean, you spent, like you said, $200,000 on coaching and you can sit here and look at the camera and say that you've gotten 50 X the value back. Yeah. And that might be selling it short. Oh yeah. Dude. I mean, for example, I just paid Wes Watson $7,500 for his business coaching. It's a three month program. In three weeks, I made $27,000 in profit. I made my money back, you know, four times what I paid in three weeks. So like, if you have a good intention going into it and that person speaks to you, usually like you will know by the time you invested hours and hours of you going through all their podcasts, all their YouTubes, you're like, this is the guy I need right now. Yeah. Like they speak to something in your soul and your mentors become the next gateway to whatever you're supposed to do. Like that person, you know, is really giving you a, the new framework or the new data set or the new point of like, okay, now I acquired what he has and now I can go and do it for myself. Yeah. And when I had Champ on the show, he mentioned something that just popped in my mind as you were saying that. And I loved it. And he's like, dude, you're less than 20 people away from a million dollars. Yeah. And I was like, True. I was like, I mean, shit, I've never thought about it that way. Yeah. But when you're in that environment, in those masterminds, in those networking events, you're meeting tons of people and it's true. Oh, yeah. And like, that's what I like to say about Miami too. Miami's like this mystical land now mm -hmm. and people are just flowing in. I could go sit at the bar at Bell Harbor for five hours and just chat it up with anybody that comes in and out. Yep. Your, my life could change right there in those five hours at a restaurant. 100%. And I think that's like, one, it's unique kind of to where, we, where we're located right now. We're in a hub for that. But it speaks to really like putting yourself out there, getting uncomfortable and going and having conversations because people just get stuck in that little bubble. Like you, we, we kind of talked about it early on. It's just, you're in that like dark zone and not to say everybody's bubbles dark, but there's, there's limits in there there. Unless there's somebody in that group that's going to the moon, you're, you're kind of hitting a ceiling where it's like, all right, anything I do, that's not what everybody's doing is weird. So I'm not going to do it, mm. but go put yourself out there. Go talk to random people, go get in front of individuals and have conversations with the non norm person that you usually talk to. And you will just find that there's this other world. Like we were just talking about it. I've lived my whole life without knowing about this Twitter world and all of this like online money. Yep. And over the last six weeks, I've gotten exposed to it. And it's a world that I just did not know. Yep. And like I can say personally that I'm closer to that million dollars yep. just because of the last six episodes I've filmed with people. And I want to be a testament to people listening to like, I had no crazy skills. I host this podcast and do not have a crazy following at all. I mean, relatively small following. And I work hard. I do the research. I add value to every guest that comes on. And just through doing that, and not that much, honestly, like, let's be honest, it's not a crazy uplift in my life. I have now gotten closer to that 20th person or 19th person. And I hope that people that are listening are getting inspired and excited and want to go out and change their life and go out and do these different things. And I think this was the perfect episode for that individual because I always try and talk to the people who might be listening. And at the end of the day, like I said, I'm not doing this for money. It's actually not making any money. It's losing money. I do it for the fact that maybe we help five people with this video right here, change their life or go in a different direction or better themselves in any way. And I think so many of the key points that we've touched on are going to do that for people as this episode grows. And I just think it's amazing. Like you've dealt with so much adversity in your life. You've done a 360 and really just gone in so many different directions. And it's ended with you being wealthy, happy, and living the life that you want to and getting to do something you're actually passionate about. If there was one thing that you could leave the people listening with, what would that be from your journey to this point, from your experience? If there was one catalyst to all of this, what would it be? Just believing in yourself, uh, having confidence. Confidence is everything for real. Like if you don't think you're going to make it in your head and you have negative thoughts, you're not going to make it. 
uh, I, I literally like think about success every second of my life. Uh, it's just on a constant loop, thinking about the jet, thinking about the next car I want to buy, thinking about my family, thinking about giving my dad the keys to a house. I mean, this is literally like 24 seven all the time. So, I mean, it, you, you become what you think. Um, so yeah, make sure everything's in alignment, what you say, what you do, what you think, and you'll get there. I mean, couldn't have said it any better. We've talked through your whole journey here. I asked the same question to every guest towards the end of the show. And like I said, it can be answered however you want. Mm. What are you, Colin, excited about in the near future? I'm excited to help thousands and millions of people uh, through coaching. I'm going to coach millions of people over the next 10 years. That's what I'm excited about. I'm excited to be able to watch you do that from the sideline now. And I, I, I tell all the guests that come on, like, now I already followed and saw what you were posting. That's how we got to this point. Mm. Now I can enjoy your success from a more personal level because I know you. We've met. I know all about your life now, naturally, due to this yeah. this job here. And I'm so excited to watch you impact all these people's lives. And I think anybody that crosses your path down this journey that you're on is going to be extremely lucky and i hope to have you on multiple more times to talk about all of these people that you've impacted how it's affected your life and how it's affected theirs so dude it has been such a pleasure to have this conversation with you and and like thank you so much for being willing to come on the show i'm fired up i know people listening and watching are probably fired up too and like i said dude i'm so excited to watch you crush it thank you brother it means a lot you're awesome. You're really good at this, by the way. Thank you, man. I appreciate Keep it. Keep going, bro. You're going to be huge. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much. Enjoy the cigars. Enjoy the thank t-shirts. You. Yeah, you got me cigars. That's awesome. Every guest that comes on the show gets a gift, so I'm not trying to entice you or, or, or tell you to come on, but you will get a gift, and it's, it's a pretty good one. Um, but, dude, thank you so much. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you.